What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sup FM, your fucking favorite sneaker podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, virtually, I got my two partners in crime, uh, one being Luke Trevisi. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? Pew, pew. We're here. <laughs> pew, pew, you fucking. Uh, and of course, also with me, um, one of my day ones right here, Lawrence Deloach. What's going on, bro? Hey, good afternoon, sir. Um, I'm happy to be back. I missed last week. Um, you know, I caught a little bit of it. Haas was talking a little crazy, but I love that guy regardless. You know what I mean? Um, and now all three of us, I believe, have our episodes out with him. So please go check out his podcast, First Kicks. Well, um, first, though, before we even get, what do you mean he was talking crazy? Haas was a great guest, all right? He's, of course mean? he's a great guest. <clears throat> yeah. But um, from what I caught from him uh, with the mischief stuff, talking about all that Satan shit, which we'll get into a little later, you know what I mean? I feel like he was speaking a little out of pocket here and there. <laughs> a little out of pocket, but that's just me. I mean, what? Do you do you disagree, Lawrence? Uh, I mean, I listen, I my my memory from last week to this week is very foggy. So I don't remember everything I said, but I do remember we were talking about the devil sneakers. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian God fearing man who's scared of like, you know, going to hell. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't remember much, but I, you know, I, I got to go back and listen to it. <laughs> yes. Plead the fifth, Lawrence. Of course, that's the best way to, to keep going to heaven. I do yeah. remember him saying that he's been on mischief for a minute. And then he said he's been watching them for like a year. So. Yeah, basically, that's where I was like, uh, we talked about that. Sh the first shoe over a year ago, I believe. over a year ago. He was like, I was the only one. I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't know about that. But anyway, you know, not to plug him and not plug us. Uh, Luke, where can people find you on social media? You can find me at Trevisus on Instagram and Twitter. I'm mostly on Instagram. If you go on my Instagram and check my link in the bio, uh, you will find a clip of me doing stand up called Luke Trevisi does a cocaine joke. And I highly recommend you watch that. I watched that. It's a great clip, bud. Thank you. Yes, Lawrence, sir. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, LZD three, two, five. You can also follow my other podcast, which is called I Hate This Job, which Luke uh, actually was the he did one of the latest episodes. It was an amazing episode. People loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, we're going to get you on soon, too. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and talk shit about jobs that we we hate. And Chris. At not that Cheney, C-H-E-N-E-Y. And of course, follow the podcast sub podcast NYC on Instagram. We're mostly Instagram people over here. We like we like visuals, not words, you know, so mm -hmm. make sure to follow us on that. And then we also have a discord, which is always in the link in description, which is always the hangout. So, you know, if you agree with us, we're about Haas talking out of pocket. You can go to the discord and let them know. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, uh, Chris, when you do do Lawrence's podcast, mm -hmm. my advice to you, choose the would you rather. He gives you an option of a spelling bee or would you rather do the would you rather? Oh, I can't spell for sure. So, yeah, right. totally. I, I came in with a lot of confidence off the top <laughs> and I thought I was going to be able to do the spelling bee. Uh, two out of three. I got wrong. Uh, <laughs> and my friends who are English majors reached out to me and they were like, how could you do this to us? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How are you friends with people that are still in English majors? No, no, no. Like they. They graduated they were. already. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I thought you, you know? were taught you had children friends that you no. had. <laughs> Suspect. <laughs> so yeah. let's listen. Let's let's just get right into it. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to bring the podcast down, but this needs to be addressed. Rip, rest in peace, Earl Simmons, Dark Man X, DMX. What? X. What? Um, you know, just just a a, a transcendent talent who you know, shaped the lives of many people, Absolutely. you know, as a, as a kid who, you know, I was a kid in, in the nineties when, when DMX rose to fame. I mean, there wasn't a kid in New York city who, who wasn't barking, who didn't, you know, sing, get at me, dog, stop, drop, open up shop. You know what I mean? It, it was, and just to see, you know, to see his life over the last 20 years in the public eye, whether it was the ups and the downs, uh, to see him pass away after a, a week long battle in the hospital, you know, being on life support, it uh, it it hurts obviously, and I and I guess I we, this is more of a celebration uh, of segment for him. Mm -hmm. But uh, what were you, you know, how did DMX uh, change your lives, guys, or or his music or his personality, or you know, talk a little bit about X Luke. Um, I remember, you know. Uh, when I was a kid and like DMX, so I was like, what, like seven or eight when DMX was like popping off. And uh, I remember being in class as a kid and they were teaching us fire safety. 
which is like a classic moment that everybody gets where it's like, you know, they go stop, drop. And then there was a kid next to me who whispered in my ear, shut him down, open up shop. And I was like, there was snot coming out of my nose. So it's like one of my favorite <laughs> moments. And they were like, what, 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 what happened? What share with the class? What, what, he, what he just said. And I couldn't speak. It was so funny. <laughs> but that's my only DMX story. Like I've, you know, I've watched DMX kind of over the years and like, all the stuff he's been in. He did that one thing with Chris Rock where he's like singing in the jail cell. I remember that. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, it's like he's always just been a constant in, you know, in my life in some way. Like there's either a reference from somebody or or uh, you're seeing him on TV or whatever. You just felt like he was never going anywhere. And it's very sad to see him go. I mean, he is such a transparent figure when it comes to um, just being honest with yourself. Uh, I mean, so he is like a hood guy. Right. But as he transcended from that into being like this hip hop star, you know, there's that classic thing where he's like with the orchids or whatever. And he's doing the plants and he's like, you know, I just realized that you just got to give it time and effort. It's shit like that where you're like, <clears throat> like, oh, the growth. You got to see this guy grow as a human. You know what I mean? Like in all his ups and downs with addiction. I mean, more importantly, like not only to celebrate his life, but we have to make sure that we identify that this is a, an addiction thing where, you know, us as a country, we don't really get to uh, sort of isolate the problem and really identify it like we can now. And, you know, addiction is a huge thing. So that's not only to celebrate him, but also identify that there is an issue with this addiction situation that we have in this country, especially with the opioid epidemic and the hitting down the places. And hopefully, I, don't, I mean, I don't know the full details. I hope this wasn't like a fentanyl situation that went wrong. You know what I mean? Because like motherfuckers would be putting that shit and everything now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was lucky enough to have a few words with him. Um, so the spray ground office, <clears throat> which you guys, I don't know if you remember, but is also the same uh, office as Rock Nation. They're like, I'm on the top there. I remember when uh, Jay was kind of, do you guys remember when Jay got Ja and X back in the room together and they kind of had that murder ink talk of like a reunion or whatever. I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was coming. I still smoked at the time. I was coming in from a cigarette and uh, I'd see like people here and there. Like I saw Jay once or twice. I never had a word with him, but, you know, there'd be rappers in and out the building. But I saw X and he was coming out. <clears throat> I mean, he was going out. I was coming in and he's with like five dudes or some shit. Not like a huge posse, but he was with some people. And I didn't realize it was him. And I looked up and I went, oh, shit, X, what up? And I swear to God, I'm not lying. I swear to God, he growled. He went, what up? And he just kept it pressing. I was like, this guy's a fucking legend. Yeah. I don't give a shit what anyone says. That man growled at me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you as a as a kid growing up in New York City, you know, I, I just remember, you know, hearing get at me dog but before get at me dog you would just hear him like you know i remember him being on mesa's 24 hours to live and just outshining everyone you know money power respect these these are songs that his presence was so strong that like he couldn't he had to go last on the track of course like you know it was like the the buster rhymes like you can't like you can't overpower this man and you know there was a time and i will always say this that you know 98 you know, DMX was a bigger figure than Jigger. You know, of I mean, he's bigger than Jay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, there was the oh my god, like this guy is a a superstar. He had the, he had the what I would call the residual people saying, man, this guy could be the next Tupac. Ball head, you know, very charismatic. You know, he had his own thing about him. And um, I remember him dropping the double album, the, not the double albums, but the two albums in in the same in a six seven month span, being number one. And it was like, what the fuck? Like, you know, you you go from his dark and hell is hot to flesh of my flesh. And it's like, yo, he's he's getting better. Like, it's not even a a drop. And and I remember just, you know, him being so, so strong that um, <laughs> we couldn't wear in my in my junior high school. It was maybe high school. You know, we we couldn't wear red because of the whole get at me dog, the whole blood significance that, you know, that whole thing wow. that was going on back then. I remember, man, some of my friends, they got sliced in the face. Damn. And yeah, man. It was because, you know, it was like, you know, late nineties, we were, we were young. We was, you know, 14, 15 ish, you know, we yeah. were young, young kid, 13, you know, I don't even remember, but it was young. And, you know, this guy was just, you know, the rough riders and everything they, you know, it was man, it was a fucking movie, man. To be imagine being a young kid, but imagine being an adult 
at that time when you know being around the Rough Riders, man. It, wow, you get you get emotional. You hear all the songs and you're like, fuck. Like you always like I would listen to these songs all the time, like before X passed away, and you would just be like, money, cash, oh, like you hear all that, and you're like, damn, or like you know, slipping and all that, and then like to hear it now, you know, just man, it's it's mind blowing to me. So, you know what's great though is that we did get like. A, a, we got a, like a last bit of content from him this year. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, he did a drink champs. I haven't gotten listened to it, but I've been seeing a lot of clips about it. And I, he had some wise words there. He did a versus with Snoop. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So he, he got to like remind us quickly before he got taken away from us, you know, of like who he is and shit, mm-hmm. um, which is great. We usually don't get that with some of these guys. You know what I mean? Well, well the drink, not even, not only the drink champs, but the the ver- the verses, like you said, the verses was, I mean, come on, man, that that right there was 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 legendary to see him and Snoop. Yo, I just loved how he did not care that some of his songs did not age well, and he he said them anyway. Some of the shit he said in that verses was crazy. I was like, bro, you can't say that now. But no, he didn't. It was it was it was pure and it was dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, a life uh, had a session with him. Um, I unfortunately had to leave early. Uh, it was like 1 a.m. and it was like a work night. I believe it was like a Wednesday night or some shit. It was in the financial district and uh, I had to dip because I worked the next day. But like the place um, was still packed. That's how much respect people had for him and wanted to see him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like it was like Wednesday 1 a.m. and it was a full club. I'm mm-hmm. like, damn, I got to go. He didn't go up till two. Was this the background shows from back in the day? It wasn't in the back. It was at like some place and they rented a spot. I don't because it, it was after um, they left the company that they were with at the time. So I, there was something going on there. With, I don't know. Yeah. But they had a separate venue. They started doing stuff outside of the. Um, oh, you know what it was? They thought they weren't going to be able to handle all the people in the back, I think. So that's why they rented a spot. That's a testament to DMX right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they only did that with a couple people. And he was one of them. I think after the, the second Drake session, they were like, oh, we not we went to outsource the space mm-hmm. for some for certain people. And he was one of them. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about his uh because obviously this is a streetwear podcast, and you yep. know, and, and I look back on that era when rappers fucking sold clothes. Like it was like you were you could sell like Rockaware, you know, Rough Riders, you know, Fat Farm, Fubu, all that that shit. And, you know, and, and X was street like, you know, it was ten, it wasn't no like, you know, he wasn't out there. I'm rocking Jordan threes and Jordan. That, that motherfucker was wearing Tim's. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at the clip from uh, him in Woodstock. That's one of the to me, one of the most it's iconic. Oh, is that uh the red overall? Oh, red overalls and yep. red Tim's. Yep. <laughs> and oh, it's like that was his style, man. Like it wasn't no flashy chains. He had like, you know. You know, the one chain usually around his neck, you know what I mean? And and, and it was his accessory were pit bulls, bro. Yeah. Oh, I got it right here. Wow. Oh, could you turn on screen share? Oh, shit. Sorry. It's OK. I mean, he's not here, so we're going to fall apart. You should <laughs> no. We're not going to fall apart. We're fine. No, we're fine. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. he had a he had a very uh, it, it was very genuine. Like everything about him was very genuine. Right. He put himself out there very much. A lot. We didn't really appreciate it. I, at least I didn't appreciate it at the time, you know? Yeah, it sucks, man. Like, you you know, you always, hindsight's twenty twenty. like, you always realize shit after, you know what I mean? It's like, you, you never want to, like, admit that you didn't appreciate it when you had it. But, like, you know, after I saw that his kids were flying in, I was like, oh, man, it's he's he's fucking toast, dude. He's ODMX now, you know? So I was really jamming out um, the other night. And I was like, damn, I haven't been listening to this shit enough. Mm-hmm. He had that one locks joint he just did about shit, and I was like hyped that I got some twenty twenty barks. You know what I mean? But like, you got to go back to the ninety eight barks too. Well, I mean, ninety eight barks. You know, if, if you're if you're a, I hate this. Like, this is I hate this comparison. But if you're like a uh, a wrestling fan from like the the old days, like mm-hmm. his style and who he was reminded me of like the Ultimate Warrior. Like, like fucking intense. Rip your head off. Leave. Like, you know what I'm saying? Run to the ring, shake the ropes, leave. Like, you know what I mean? It was just like his he was so intense, bro. Like, like you just hear him and you feel like the pain on the tracks. You feel the intensity. And it's just you, 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 you won't. You, there's never a, a rapper or, you know, that we that we've had since then or that will ever 
you know, compare to that, what he brought to the table. Whenever I have like pre-show anxiety, X is usually the guy I go to, to listen to music, to like kind mm-hmm. of just like just get into a zone. Mm-hmm. Like X yeah. is that X is that guy, man. You just throw on what what these bitches want. And you're like, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they want me. <laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, rest in peace, X. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and um and all and, you know, play your favorite tracks. Keep if you know, just, you know, you, there's a lot of memories that, you know, that man provided for this world and and um yeah that's the that's the best way i think we can we can close this uh this x yeah uh, segment so do yourself for him do yourself a favor and go watch the clip if you do nothing else go watch him sing uh, rudolph, rudolph the red nose reindeer, reindeer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh my yeah. god yeah that is one of the best things that exists on the internet oh yeah yeah it's, it's amazing so <laughs> All right, guys. Let's uh, let's let's talk about some other stuff. We got we got a lot of things to talk. Other things to talk about this week. Uh, we, got a, we got a lawsuit, right? Yeah, yeah. Man. This is uh, this is getting resolved. The this is uh, man. Nike is just throwing out lawsuits left and right whenever they can. Mm-hmm. So we've got the little Nas X uh, Satan shoe. We've got an update on this situation. Did you guys actually read this story? Do you know what's going on with this? I don't think I'm fully up to date. So any info that you got for me, any insight would be great, Luke. Uh, I believe that they are going to cancel like uh, they're going to cancel any orders. Uh, Mischief is going to give them an opportunity to refund uh, the pairs. Oh, we're doing a Warren Lotus part two. I believe so. I think this is the situation, you know, Um, I think it's because it's it's kind of like the same thing that happened with the Warren Lotus situation where, you know, if they had not made such like a like a if they had not branded it so closely to nike like you know you see the swoosh and all the pictures and whatnot it really fucked with the image you knew it was going to be a problem when we we covered it the week before and then all of the major outlets are like putting out this news and then everybody in the comments of every fucking video is like how could nike do this and blah 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 and like no you idiots it's not yeah. nike that's putting it but like the mm-hmm. second people start going how could Nike do this? That's they when you go, they got to do something because it's like, mm-hmm. no, you know. Well, this this seems to be like the new way to get like some serious attention. And I don't want to discredit uh, little Nas X, though, on this rollout, because like that song that he came out with mm-hmm. along with this. And then he did some other like little sly shit on the side. But like the rollout for that video, like yeah. alongside this and like the devil motif and all that, like that was great. But I mean, like that lawsuit, it's like the. You know, that was like the real hammer and the nail for him as far as uh, grabbing people's attention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, come on. I, I think and I honestly I'm going to say this. I think there was never an intent to actually sell them. I think it was it was the the intent or or I think the main thing that was trying to be done was the publicity. I didn't want to say it too fast. I probably would have fucked it up. But the publicity, <laughs> I think all, you know, when you have all these media outlets covering it, when you have, you know, when this is a, a CNN story. Uh, and like Luke was saying, I think there were, I mean, there were people that was actually like, fuck Nike, how dare you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and Nike ain't trying, they don't want that smoke, but mischief is getting all this publicity. They're getting all this attention. So, mm-hmm. Is that the move now? Like, should we try to get sued by Nike so our podcast can get through the roof to the moon, bro? Oh, I, I've been saying this for a minute. Let's call <laughs> Dexter. Let's make the let's get sued ones. Let's get this done, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean. That, that, that's the move. You just, you just got to get sued by Nike. Maybe we should go with another brand. Let's get sued by Adidas somehow. <laughs> really mix it up. We got to go smaller. Got to go smaller than it because we got we can't deal with all of those lawyers from Adidas. Right. We can't deal with Nike lawyers. We can't deal with Adidas. Let's go smaller. Do we have a smaller brand we can think of? Maybe Puma. I mean, I mean you Puma know, got lawyers, too, bro. Like, yeah, but yeah. Jay-Z, I know. I know that. But Jay-Z owns Puma, like is working with, with Puma. Maybe we can meet Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Be pretty cool well you're I'm, on the board of directors of nike bro i don't know i'm working on it still man <laughs> it's not canon yet oh right right my fault uh yeah man i think this is a another situation like that like how is this going to change how do you guys think this is going to change like the customizing uh landscape how do you think this is going to affect it's so know? hard to tell man because this is literally like an evolving thing at like week to week like this has gotten crazier and crazier you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i think we were in the forefront talking about it uh especially with the warren lotus thing but even before that we've had debates about you know shit like bape and all this other shit 
Um, but I mean, like, it's it's literally just such a like a fluid thing right now where, you know, like that shit with like, you know, Warren Lotus, this and then, you know, even Bape going back to making more Nike ripoffs. They're not getting touched on. It's like it's 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 it's, it's growing at such an expansive rate that it's really hard to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The labels uh, of things have gotten so blurred. You know, like what's a replica what versus what's a bootleg versus what's a custom like it's it's really all the same word right now. Right. So until things get a little more defined, until there's more a couple more lawsuits that I think draw some lines to make a square. I don't know really where this is going to take itself because there's there's no boundaries right now. I was going to say, man, I like I and I've always said, I mean, I look at, you know, I look at a guy like even Dex, the, the creator, where, mm -hmm. you know, I look at it on his social media and I'm like, man, this is like you're drawn. You're on the fucking fence, bro. You're on that line where, yeah. you know, I think like, you know, and I, it, and I think it becomes one of those things where it's like, OK, what's the actual objective? Is it to move my custom sneakers or to get my shit so hot that now Nike is now, you know, it becomes a, a public Warren Lotus situation. I don't know because yeah. I mean, you, you were, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, he, I'm looking at some of the stuff he, he was putting in and it was very, it's very close and very, I agree. So hold on for, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, I, I was, I was thinking of that interview as well that we had with him uh, where, you know, he said that it all comes down to intent, right? So like he kind yeah. of approaches it more, I guess, like sneakers as an art form. And he and we were still on the fence about him until he showed us in his interview that, you know, he was going to like he showed us how he makes the shoes. And then at that point, it's like you're putting in all of this work for, you know, uh, you know, to be accused of certain things that you might not be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I think it's like, you know, when you see that that level of like effort that someone like Dexter puts in. It's you know, it's interesting. It's very interesting to see like what he's doing, like on that end. Well, and yeah, I, because it becomes a craft. You know what I mean? It becomes mm -hmm. a skill. It, it comes it becomes a point where it's not like, you know, you debate who does what, where and why. But I mean, like when you're handcrafting something, that's not that's more important. That, that overtakes the infringement, I think, on the IP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and he's got like because he's got like this new UV shoe that kind of is trans. It changes color like he's. He's doing some interesting stuff, I will say. Yeah, um, definitely got to got to keep a close eye on him as usual. Yes, sir. But what yeah, else we, what else we got to talk about, guys? What else we talking about? I mean, you know, you know what's coming around the corner. It's the tenth right now, right? We're recording on a Saturday. Ten more days, and it's four twenty, baby. Let's talk about four twenty shoes. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about 420 shoes, because this is a very interesting topic to at least me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but like, you know, now that weed's legal at New York City, it's about to get legal in a bunch of places. I mean, there's unfortunately still people, uh, you know, incarcerated for weed, but mm -hmm. weed shoes have been around forever. Right. Mm -hmm. I can I can hearken back to, I think, like 2004 or five, maybe wow, six. Look at you. Look, someone read a book recently. <laughs> I hearken back. Yeah. Um, but back then, you know, it, just to sort of like bring the topic, like, you know, we're just talking about Nike suing everybody or whatever. They don't, they're not trying to have any fucking shit go on with their shit. But I mean, like they were making weed shit when weed shit was not something to make. Right. Of course. <clears throat> but now here we have like, you know, it's become like a streetwear sort of uh, not. I don't want to say holiday, but it's like a streetwear event. What, what is the Nike 420 shoe? Right. Uh, now we got these like what are they called Maui somethings the Maui Wowies maybe. Maui Wowies yeah which is they're following the trend of having a shoe under the shoe you know what I mean the peel off mm -hmm. shit mm -hmm. I don't know if it was because I was smoking weed but I was thinking about these shoes the other day and do you notice how most of the SB dunks from the 420 collection are SB high never really noticed that before <laughs> <laughs> Luke, you fucking detective. Holy shit. I like I put two and two together one day and I was just like, oh, maybe that's what because the high shoot like the high tops are notoriously like not as well. No, they're, they're as lows. Nope, they are better. Right. But I'm telling you <laughs> that like the the general consumer doesn't like high tops as much. So I was like, why would they do that? Oh, SB dunk high. 
stash pocket. It's all part of the theme, of you know? Mm-hmm. What are you guys' thoughts on the Maui Wowies? I think they're actually, they're a very l- nice shoe. <laughs> they're, look, I mean, it's not for me. I can't rock around and wear these. Like, all over patterns on shoes are kind of crazy to me, but mm-hmm. I think that's just because I look crazy in them. But, like, as an object, these are great. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish... Damn. I don't know about you guys. I don't know how it was in New York, uh, but, I, you know, iPath was the really the brand that set off the stash pocket shit. And I told you guys this off mic, but I always I have a weird thing with the stash pocket because a lot of my friends got in trouble because the cops in Boston knew the shoes with the stash pocket and that gave them um, what reasonable doubt. Is that the verbiage to, to search them? So like they would see the stash pocket and they would be like, oh, you might have weed on you and they, they would all get tapped up. Probable cause. Yeah, probable cause. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I never I never ran into that. Um, but, you know, also, I never really had any of the, the stash pocket shoes. Even back then, they were mm-hmm. always highly coveted, you know, so I could never really get my hands on them. What about you, Lawrence? Uh, what are my thoughts on on stash pockets? In no, general? like, did you did you ever have any experiences where like like did you, did the cops ever like have a, 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 any semblance of knowing that you had a stash pocket shoe on you or whatever all right i'm gonna say this and i'm thankful for it. i've never been searched by a police officer I, I'm, hell yeah I'm, dude I'm, yeah I'm, I'm really you know i'm one of the few black men i can say that on this pot one of the very few black men in this world who that's have, a credit in itself man in itself um in terms of stash pocket shoes and, and this is another and this is another thing i'm gonna say usually i don't care i don't really carry weed on me or anything like any contraband usually you know the most thing i'll carry on me would be like an edible mm-hmm, right. uh yeah but i don't like just to carry like actual like you know weed and shit nah you know so i'm kind of thankful for that but um i don't mind the stash pockets i mean once again it's you know i what am i usually putting in what would i put in there you know, I don't I'm not going to put food in a fucking stash pocket. <laughs> I put I put tater tots like I'm Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. That's what I'm, yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of the, the the main shoes that, you know, that have had stash pockets. I mean, I think I don't know if I don't know if this one has stash pocket, but just going back to the 420 concept in general, I think. Um, uh, damn, I'm going to blank on the name now. But what was the one that had the grass texture, the one that had the shades of green and then had the purple hits? The skunks? Skunks? Yes, the skunks. Those are the ones. That's yeah. it. Those are the ultimate 420 ones. Those are the first ones, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, f- we first had, you know, I was I was tracking like the kind of the history of the stash pocket, right? And it starts with Chad Muska, the skateboarder, mm-hmm. uh, super stoner, kind of created this stash pocket situation. Haven't really looked back since. And and then when Nike, I think like because Nike had done it with the skateboarding brand, it was easier for them to get away with it. Okay. Uh, and my reasoning behind it is because the culture behind skateboarding already kind of uh, associates with the stoner community as well. And uh, skateboarding shoes didn't have the same hype that they did that they, that they do now. So I think because they were able to like, kind of, it was still kind of this underground society. They were able to kind of push the line on these sneakers to the point where they could get away with this stash pocket and then now they're kind of a regular occurrence like the bape uh adidas uh zx runners that i have Mm -hmm. um they have stash pockets too and i didn't even notice and like nobody really oh really yeah yeah they have like two stash pockets the same in the tongue yeah in the tongue the same way the um Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen like the stash pocket on the grateful deads where it's like it's a zipper on the top of the tongue it's like that oh wow you know what like i didn't know that either uh, but they weren't advertising it. It's just kind of become like a kind of n- like normal thing in like gotcha. sneaker world now, you know, even okay. with the Travis Scott's right stash pocket on the side. I mean, that's I, I mean, I hear you. The mm-hmm. pockets thing. That's a little more apparent. That's a little more like military, like look at Argo my pants you know, kind yeah. of situation. Right. Um, Yeah. Duh, yeah. <laughs> I just I'm sorry. I just keep remembering different times. We'd just be like skating in the cop would go by and they'd see the shoes and they'd be like all right yo stay right there and then the guy would pull you we were like oh shit i'm like do anyone have anything you know what i mean it's like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just funny man. Well, it's Jesus so Christ. weird that like your co- like their your cops were like were forced to be sneakerheads before sneakerheads were a thing i know 
it's, I know. It's well, all right. So I mean, just to super clarify, th- these are like small town cops. When I no, say Boston uh, cops, I mean like I was twenty minutes outside the city. So these guys had like really nothing better to do, bro. Like That's- these guys just liked picking on kids. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, so, of course. They're shitheads from Massachusetts. Of course they're gonna like <laughs> I do like the idea of like a a, a briefing where it's yeah. just like, all right, yeah, so um all yeah, right, the kid. <laughs> so Bape just uh, did this Adidas <laughs> runner where now if you see the Bape Adidas, make sure you stop the kids and ask if they got anything on them. Question, question, chief. Is, yes. the, is yes. the Bape the one with the with the monkey head? Is that the one? <laughs> yes, it is the monkey head one. There's also a small cartoon monkey. So don't forget that one. I don't I can't keep up with these fucking, kids. <laughs> they're fucking, they're fucking sneakers. So, oh, fuck. so the verdict is. We're fucking with the Maui Wowies, right? Yeah. yeah. In general, yeah. I mean, again, I can't wear them, but I'm. I, if I see them, I'm gonna dap whoever got them. Uh, right. Are you tearing them off? Are you t- are you tearing off the uh, what do you call it? That first layer, that blue layer, to get that green and red one underneath. Well, actually, you know what? I would like to. I think maybe there's a discussion here too, because like you see that one, you got your mouse on. Um, yeah. for those uh listening just on Spotify or just audio, you know, uh, someone ripped it off very uh purposefully. Hmm. Um, I, so with, with these shoes in general, do we keep them fresh and then let them fall naturally or do we rip them? See with the, uh, the, that like that kind of like furry suede is like so iconic to me when it comes to the weed sneakers that yeah. I would have to tear that, that part, like those, that paneling off, you know, I would have to have that showing. I mean, but, to me, that's a better colorway in general than the mm-hmm, all over. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. that's like way more wearable, but yeah. I mean, for this shoe, yeah, I guess we would you would rip them because you want the hairy suede. But I mean, like in general, I don't know what the move is on that. Well, as someone who owns like Lance Mountain uh, flex, no, mm-hmm. it's not flex. It's just they as someone who owns Lance Mountains, I keep the I kept the white coat of paint on my white pair. And I kept the black coat of paint on the black pair. I didn't I didn't try to fuck around and, and just like do it like say fuck it i'm gonna take it off because i want you know i want the mismatched shoes or i want whatever i was like it can ha- naturally happen and i think that's what on these you know if i was able to get a pair i would just be like fuck it just you know don't don't force it yeah that it also gives you an opportunity to kind of like it kind of gives you free range to kind of fuck up the shoes too mm-hmm. right like you're kind of more I'm more inclined to like wear these more often than some of my other sneakers because there there's another layer for me to like kind of tear away, you know, and yep. have like a new shoe again almost. You know what, too? Um, I think you want to keep them fresh because there's that extra layer of, oh, you have them and you didn't rip them yet. Mm-hmm. Well, that was what a problem was happening, especially with the Lance Mountains where you know, people would just like take the acetone paint and 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 strip them. And then, you know, then after a while, they people would be like, I want to sell these. And then everyone was like, man, you already fucked the sneaker exactly. up, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You ruined it. You they, know what I mean? They're yours. Like you're for there's your they're yours now. You can't sell those. Yeah. You yeah. Can't do nothing with them. And if you did, it probably go. You would have to do about retail. You can't like make money on them. You do. Mm-hmm. You probably have to do under, you know, what I mean, depending on because you've ruined the sneaker, basically. Yeah. Like. like you, you you did the experience. That, that's part of the experience of that shoe. There are the, these styles of shoes. You know what I mean? Is actually doing that. So like once you take that away from the shoe, the value of that is yeah, like you said, like probably less than half of whatever. Mm-hmm. Chris, are you like playing the bongos? Uh, yeah, I was gonna your, say, are you are shoes? you doing that? Are you knocking on the table or something? Because I I just heard a lot. Of, are you knocking? Oh, is that this. You? Yeah, what's that? Oh, maybe I was doing that. I, I, I got oh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I got new headphones and they're noise canceling, so I can't. <laughs> you can't even hear what's going on. I, cu- I couldn't even hear myself doing that. That's so I apologize great. about that. You, you... Yeah, the listeners are not going to be happy, but they're going to be like just another thing Chris Cheney does. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I we wanna... got mean. We'll fix this up. I just want to remind the listeners last week was Chris Cheney free. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we went off without a hitch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We did not challenge Haas on a couple things. Uh, he did say something last week that I kind of want to discuss with you guys a little bit further. He said that storytelling is kind of moving away from ha- like from sneakers. And this was the other thing that I want to talk about. So, yeah, j- 
to yeah, fully recap, he said like the hats are kind of becoming in a space where people sort of uh, treat them like sneakers. Now you've designed a hat yourself, right? Yeah, I have designed a hat, and you know what it is, dude? It's like the 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 sneakers have gotten so expensive mm -hmm. that people still have this void of you know they need the uh, the experience of purchasing, wearing new. They just need this a similar thing to sneakers that they can actually afford, and hats is a very close accessory in the same uh, space. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are trying to translate what they like from sneakers into hats. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence, I think you can maybe sort of attest to this because you have a very vast Supreme hat collection. Okay. And I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think a part of that is because it's one of the more affordable accessories that you can purchase at a regular rate mm -hmm. and have that same feeling of like, oh, new, new, you know, walking out the door feeling good. Yeah, I mean, it was a there was like a, a stretch, maybe like, you know, what, six, you know, six, seven years ago, I was just buying a hat every week. You know, what I mean, like yeah. it was just, you know, and and um, and I, I, what's the best way to put it? Like it, it is an affordable accessory and, you know, you pay, you know, I mean, it's not you start it starts adding up when you're paying fifty dollars, you know, forty, fifty dollars every week. But of course. um, yeah, it, it was like I said, it was one of those things, man, you know, and and. It obviously, I mean, what would you rather pay forty dollars for a hat or two hundred dollars for a pair of sneakers? I mean, the shit, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of saying, especially with the resale prices the way they are. You know what I mean? Like, none of us have the budget to cop the sneakers like we used to, but we can afford some hats. Now, Luke, kind of expound on what um, Haas was saying as far as the translation of storytelling going from sneakers to hats. Um, so like he used like pimp pink brims as like an example, as like one of the examples. So he was like saying how, you know, that his design choices, like the, having the pink brim is kind of a symbolization of like, uh, the kind of the, you know, breast cancer awareness. Right. So that kind of, uh, evolved into like this style where now, you know, you walk into a lids and you'll find like a pink brim bottom for some of these hats. Right. Right. Uh, some of the embroidery was like, you know, custom made and chosen to be like some of these things. And my, my issue with that was I should have challenged him on the next time he's on here. I will, we will have a full discussion with him because, you know, or we'll, we'll probably fight about it in the discord this week too. If you're, uh, if you're in the discord uh, links in the bio too, to join that shit. Um, so he said like embroideries are one thing where they kind of tell the stories. And he says that they, you know, it's bringing more storytelling elements to, uh, to streetwear than, sneakers are and uh i don't know if i agree with that at this point because i've seen a lot of shoes that tell different stories like uh we didn't really go into them but like the adidas campus sees they have a um south park a collaboration coming out which is another 420 shoe oh tally yep yeah they have like a towelie one and i think like the storytelling behind that they made some good choices because like i think people overlook the fact that somebody has to go can we make that a towel kind of material? Can we do mm -hmm. this with it? Can we do that with it? Like somebody's asking questions, right? Chris, as somebody you've you've designed some sneakers in your day, you've asked you've had to ask some very strange questions about sneakers to have some of the decisions that you made, right? Yeah, actually, even just to go off the reference you just said, I mean, spray ground, we had a towely drop, mm -hmm. and we had to work very hard to get a uh, waterproof towel material that functioned correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've had I've asked some very weird things. Um, yeah, this is one of those ones that was probably a nightmare to produce. I wouldn't be surprised if they worked on the shoe for like three years. Yeah, because of the is it because of the UV? Like, have you worked with UV before? Yeah, all this stuff is just really hard to work with, especially because you have to think about like when you when you do one sample, mm -hmm. a sample is very easy to do. But then you have to think about mass producing it. Yeah. Um, and then there's the, the trials and tribulations with that. But uh, yeah, the, the finding the material, the the getting it to, you know, going back to kind of what, what Farrell was talking about when we had her on, like the cost and uh, the wages of all this stuff, especially to find different places, like what factory makes where and what. So, yeah, it's a nightmare sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I think it, it gets overlooked sometimes when it comes to the storytelling elements. I think we have a lot of examples of, of very good storytelling and sneakers that aren't just Nikes either, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. like uh another one that i wanted to bring up if you guys are cool with it we could talk about something else right now but i want to talk about the talk new about it. 550s bro talk about it those 550s from ald you know kind of continuing that same kind of uh you know revival 
kind of uh, theme, theme that they've been using for these 550s, you know? We have kind of this uh, yellow and green pattern on one and then like a black and uh, black and red, or is it more like a red and blue? I can't really, we can't really see, mm -hmm. but you know, we're back here again with the 550s and this kind of old kind of style feel. How do we feel about the second take of the uh, Aim Leon Door 550s? I do. I mean, they just smash it again. It's hard to argue with like the same thing, just done with different colors. You know what I mean? They kept it clean. They kept it simple. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think they kept it super clean. Uh, I think they kept it super simple, like you said. Uh, it's always hard, and I'm gonna say this, and this is some real shit. It's all, the 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 sequel is always, you know, tougher uh, to make better than the first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Absolutely. The first, the first was were amazing. Uh, these are also, I mean, like I said, these are solid. Um, I I once again, I mean, I'll definitely try for a pair. But yeah, they, they, they're knocking it out the park. They're definitely mm -hmm. killing it. Uh, we should note that. Uh, so Teddy Santis is going to be the creative director of New Balance in 2022. Who so congratulations that? to him. Explain who that is to the listeners. Um, to the listeners, to the listeners, definitely to the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> to the listeners. Um, you know, you put me on a little on spot. Um, exactly. I think exactly you just throw <laughs> names out here like you're supposed to know, but you don't fucking know. Yeah. Well, you... I just well, no, I just don't want it to be a situation where I misspeak on this guy. Uh, so I mean, basically, just do your homework. Just you know, Teddy Santis, he's a very respected uh figure out here. I just don't want to say anything other than congratulations. And for anybody that wants information, you can um le let me make sure my facts are correct, and I'll uh hit me in the DM or the Discord, and we can discuss after. Yes, we can discuss after. Um, also, I promised that I would do some Chinatown market um, replacement names. We'll do that next week. All right. OK, we'll have some Do fun. I've been I've been delayed. All right. I can't think of any names. It's very hard to do. Uh, 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 for that's a very hard formula to follow. Give me a break, guys. Okay. Well, I, okay. You know, I should I should bring the context together, though. He is um, Ame. He works for he's uh, oh, he's okay. he's on the Ame side of things. But now he's going to work directly with New Balance. Exactly. OK. Uh, Lawrence, you were talking about sequel sneakers and how it's very tough to follow the original. Um, I think we could take this opportunity to kind of talk more about these uh, Travis Scott sixes. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's dive in. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting, you know, closer looks at these sneakers. Obviously, you know, this is the second iteration of the of the six. We've got a nice little side pocket as well. Um, how do we feel? What do, what do we feel about these, you know, we, we, we went over these glow in the dark sneakers. You guys did more of the conversation when these first came out. I wasn't around for that. You know, what was the consensus on glow in the dark uh, big boy sneakers? I mean, I'm always I've always enjoyed glow in the darks. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean, I can go back. It's like far as easy ones. You know, what I mean, like we're certain where, you know, sushi is glowed in the dark. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still a fan of certain glow in the darks. These are cool. I actually, like I said, I, I kind of, you know, I don't know if I'm on, if I like these a little bit more than the first iteration, but they're definitely a nice, uh, a nice, uh, clean color shoe, if that makes sense. A little bit darker than I, than I initially expected. Um, I think from like the early product shots, it, they looked a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised with like the finished, because it's, it's almost like a combination of like <clears throat> the early pictures that we saw, plus like, those yellow sixes that were that never made it to market. It's kind yeah, of the like offset a, ones. A mm -hmm. merge of those two, you know, mm -hmm. very interesting. You know, going back to the material discussion, mm -hmm. um, I know uh, the glow in the dark idea is sort of rudimentary <clears throat> mm -hmm. in in concept because as, as kids we always like to glow in the dark shit. But on a sneaker, that is a very premium material that is costly. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, absolutely. So we, anytime you see a glow in the dark sneaker, just know that's like that's. I, I would consider that more of a premium sneaker just due to the material. Oh, so my mom was right. I, I was paying. I was a premium. I was getting premium sneakers from pay less shoes. That's what you're telling me. Hilarious. <laughs> she was like these. She was like, you can't. We can't get these. These are expensive people's shoes at pay less shoes. Well, I mean, think about all the shoes that at least we care about that are glow in the dark. Right. Those mm -hmm. are always some like hype level type of shit, like mm -hmm. a post worthy sneaker. Mm, true, true, true. How do we feel about uh, Raging Bulls came out this week as well? You know, 
Uh, anybody lu any luck on any of them? You know, how do we feel about them? I feel like those should have stayed <clears throat> back. They should have left those. Those are in the past. Yeah, because they those are a shoe that you only look at from old photos and you go like, oh, yeah, I remember those. But now I'm like, I'm cool. Those just oh. had their moment, I think. I'm going to disagree. I think there was so many people and, and it's such a it's such an interesting trajectory with that sneaker. When they came out, I think it was 2009 or 2008 uh, when I'm, when those came out as part of the pack. Yeah, I think it was 2009 uh, when they came out as part of the pack. Mm. Uh, they were, I think, three hundred dollars. We weren't really, you know, used to seeing packs, but this was something that Jordan Brand was definitely doing in terms of you know we saw the countdown pack take place, I believe. Yeah, in 2008 and then we mm -hmm. saw 2009 and we saw them and then the other the 3m uh you know sixes or fives you know mm -hmm. and and i think a lot a lot of the times those that pack was so obtainable and we flash forward maybe three or four years later and then this this whole wave of of um of Jordan, you know, people wanting to go back and have this nostalgia and, and, and retros and sneakers that sat were now so, so wanted. And I think this is for the collectors. This is kind of, you know, I don't know how close the 2009s are with the 2021s, mm -hmm. but I can understand the the hype. I mean, plus all red uh, Jordan does numbers. I mean, we saw with the Toro uh, Bravo fours, yep. we've seen the threes that the, the all red threes do numbers. So, I mean, this isn't surprising. I, You know what it is to me, dude? I just see that shoe and I just think of comeback season, Drake. I think of just like that, like you said, 09. I think of that whole era. I don't think that shoe necessarily like, um, I'm not going to say aged well because it is a classic shoe from that pack, but I just don't, I don't think it updated well. You know, I don't think it's like within the style that we live in today. It just seems like just like an old shoe, but that's just me. I get it, but there's there's also I mean the counter to that point, and it's so many there's collectors, there's people who yeah you know who missed out on the first drop who were too young. I mean I think the fact that you know we are getting twelve years later uh, a sneaker that you know many people may have slept on it it does bring back memories. It brings you know you look at like the, the Carmines, you look at mm -hmm. certain certain Jordans that yeah that to to you and I may be a little a little dated or maybe something that we may not want to wear in 2021, but there's so many people who are like, fuck man, my, I love these sneakers and my other shits are uh, broke on me, you know? Mm -hmm. Facts. No, that's true. Can't, I can't hold you on that. Definitely. I also saw a debate that was going on on Twitter. Um, the, um, uh, the Amma Manir threes versus the hyper Royal ones. Which one do you like more? I think they're too different. I mean, yeah. What kind of debate was this? It was just like, you know, they were kind of releasing around the same time. So oh, I, I guess, guess what argument, would you rather buy? I guess yeah, if like yeah, if you, what you, if you could only on? chase one one rabbit because, you know, man who chases two rabbits catches none. Um, wow. What a philosophy. One? That's a, you know, you're, you're so deep, Luke. Dropping gems over here. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you had to chase one, the Amma Manir or the Hyper Royal ones, which one? I mean, I think I think I stated on a previous episode that like those threes to me are nice. I like those threes, so I'd probably chase those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ama Manier uh, threes are are beautiful. I think you know I'm getting to the point where, and I and I I've said this I think on plenty of podcasts, and just the fact that the way they're doing the ones, man, it's 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 so fucking annoying. And they'll still sell out. Mm -hmm. They're still wanted. But, you know, I, I get to the point where it's like, man, I'm good with my I think my my 10 pair of ones from, you know, and all the the good colors that I, you know, grew up on. So like Hyper Royals, all this shit. I'm I'm good. Mm -hmm. Why? What are you doing, Luki? I'm getting the Hyper Royals. I like the Turbo Greens a lot. So mm -hmm. like it kind of matches that came a kind of suede pattern. I mm -hmm. like that a lot. Also, I don't know. If you guys remember, but my blazers that I used to have, the ice cream pack blazers, kind of I, my goal is to kind of have a Jordan version of that because my blazers have fallen apart. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to have like an ice cream pack situation where I get the turbo greens, the hyper royals. And if they do like a pink pair, that'd be perfect. I'll have all three again. Gotcha. Great. So I have I have my own goals in mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, I don't Not know. No, what do you got? No, I was going to say, I just, you know, it, it's, it's upsetting. There, there's a video. It's a hilarious video with uh, Nori and Nas. And, and Nori was making fun of Nas for wearing Vans. 
Mm-hmm. And then Nas was started making fun of Nori for wearing uh, it was a pair of black and green ones, and he was like, "Yo, what the fuck? Jordan ain't playing no black and green ones. Some shit is terrible." Ah, uh, the purist mentality. It's mm-hmm. the purest the the because you know Nas is come on man, motherfucker, you know had a fucking uh, a classic and and you know twenty five twenty six years ago at nineteen, you know what I mean, the young kid, you know. So he's from that that era, you know what I mean. He's seen Jordan, you know, be Jordan, and I, you know, I kind of especially when it comes to ones. Like, I can't, you know, there's, you know, I do, with the exception of, like, the Shattered Backboard series, the, you know, the the fragments, you know what I mean? Like, for the most part, like, my Jordan 1, what I have is Royals, Chicago's, Black Toes, you know, that, I'm in that realm. Mm. And then when I start seeing all these new colors, I'm like, um, I just don't do it for me, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it just don't do it, you know what I mean? So, um. I think that's, you know, and I think, I think after 2017, 18 ish, I think they just started. It was like, I don't give a fuck. We just going to do whatever. Gentry's like, we're going to fucking put some zippers on these ones and we're going to make some, uh, some oh, yeah. zoom ones and we just going to bastardize these ones. Yeah. Let's just really yeah. deconstruct, reconstruct, make it uh, uh, the option. Did we ever really cover those zipper ones? The ones that you never. Could zip I off? just, I also realized, yeah, we never really covered those kind of Jordan zip up. Uh, ones that we were because them shits. I mean, those are like you guys remember when the zip off pants came around? The zip zip off off pants, pants? yeah, because you could you could zip off your pants and then make them shorts, make them shorts. Yeah, I I remember that they were kind Mm -hmm. of like uh, kind of look like almost Janko jeans, but like, yeah, yo, we dogged everybody who had that shit. Like, what the fuck, you do? Like, pick a pick a side here, pants or shorts. Why you got to have that because then you're just walking around with half your pants in your pocket. Mm. Yeah, we used to make fun of everybody. That's why I, I see when I see those zip off ones. I'm like, yo, pick a side, bro. Mm-hmm. You're talking about these, right? Yeah. Yeah. You see those, you know, zip ones. It's it's, you know, once again, but they sell out. So it's like, oh, OK, cool. We can fucking make whatever we want. And people are still going to buy them because they're Jordan ones. It, mm-hmm. uh, oh, look at that jewel placement on the toe. Get them yeah. out of here, bro. That shit is am- garbage. I am not a fan of the double swoosh on these. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, you know, as I get older and I've been listening to you guys uh, yell about this for years, I think the, <laughs> the bastardization of the Jordan one is is like I'm starting to kind of come around on it. When I was younger, I was like, maybe not even younger, like two months ago. I was like, I, you you would have caught me saying like, no, it's good because people couldn't get Jordan ones back in the day and blah, blah, blah. But then the argument kind of just comes back around to why don't you just re-release the ones that, you know, he wore. Right. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it is as, as we kind of get away from the Jordan legacy, as we get further and further away from it, because Jordan hasn't played basketball, like, you know, for the NBA in 20 years now. Right. Um, almost 18, almost like 18, years. 18. But that's like that. And that was like the Wizards that we're talking about. Right. Yeah. This, well, the Bulls. In, yeah. Right. Over over 20 years. Yeah. Right. So Lawrence like has a calendar game. where he has all the dates marked at every every game that he played. I, I just know I just I, this is information <laughs> I know that I shouldn't know, but I just know it for some reason. <laughs> right. But I, uh-huh. but like it's it's the, the, the further we get away from the legacy, you know, the the, the brand and the image of the Jordan one is going to change you know it's it's changing more and more every day where you know there are kids who are wearing jordan one sneakers never saw michael jordan play never even bothered to learn about michael jordan which is yeah so crazy to me the, uh, my thing on that too is like i mean we you know i'm gonna try to play the other side of the fence usually i'd be yelling at the kids but like it's hard for me to get mad at the kids like completely because they don't know right how are they how are we supposed to like we can't yell at them to educate them. You know what I mean? And this is part of the reason why we have this podcast. You know, it's just so we can help educate and, you know, at least try to get to the other side, like try to meet in the middle somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it, yeah, you can't get mad. You have to get mad at Nike. It's their fault for allowing it. They're indulging the kids and they're doing it in the wrong way. There should be some way that, you know, like they could be doing some shit like the last dance to help educate. I think the last dance was very helpful. It was very. It was. That's that's what it was. It was a Jordan piece. Come on, guys, listen. That last dance was more about motherfuckers being educated on Jordan ones. So four. Come on, that whole episode was a fucking Nike ad. It's a Nike yeah, ad. Yeah, no, of course, of course. But I'm saying there's a be- there's a way to do that that isn't such a money grab situation, and more on the a transparent educational side of things. Yeah, us. 
<laughs> yes. Us. Do this podcast every week. We'll fill you in on what you're missing. Oh, but man. yeah, get that fucking zip shit out of here. <laughs> get that shit out of the get, get the fucking that shit away from me. Yeah, man. Get those get those zip fucking sneakers out of here, bro. Conceptually good idea. Um, but no. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. As I as I sit here and, and look at my Chicago's versus the zip one, but no disrespect. I mean, that's the thing, man. And and this is but this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Because when you start looking and you say, damn, I want a pair of Chicago ones, man, that goddamn. And then you go to the secondary market and it's like, oh, two grand. It's like, fuck that. Give me the zipper shits. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, like what? Like, you have to really break it down that way when you start saying, well, I can only wear Chicago's. All right, Chicago's are two grand. When you start on the black, on the secondary market, when you look at uh, uh, band ones, you know, the black and reds, they're a thousand dollars now on the, on the secondary market. Black toes. Uh, almost a grand like you know royals are, are one of the cheaper ones and they're like five six hundred dollars right now so it's kind of like it almost is like all right well we got you fiend out for these joints we ain't gonna give you these unless you mm-hmm. pay you know a fucking a mortgage for them and, and not many people doing that so we're gonna give you these bullshits because we know that you want what you want Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's the way that that's where Jordan Brand because they could easily fucking put out a, a, a Chicago every year or every other year. Yeah. You know, it's like, why? Why do we have 85, 94 and then 21 years later in 2015? That's that's our Chicago. You know, what I mean, that's what we got in Chicago's. And then it's like, oh, man, well, hopefully. And then every day, you know, and, and the people in the discord and our fucking uh, sub FM discord are, are sending. Oh, man, Chicago's. I think they're coming out. It's like, oh, it's April Fool's dog. You ain't, there's no. <laughs> but that's that's the way that this this thing is. And it's so fucked up because like, I right, well, when's the next time Chicago's are coming out? And then, so, you know, you hear rumors. It's like maybe for the 40th anniversary, which would be, you know, in, in another, you know, four years maybe yeah. but insane that, that but who knows but it, the even idea of 40th anniversary is wild yeah you guys are getting old that's oh yeah we're getting to half a century of sneakers yeah, you know what yeah. i mean like we're closer to a half a century that word itself is just crazy to say than anything else yeah yeah that's what i'm saying so i i think you know i think we gotta you know we really look at i mean and even when you look at like the collabs with, with the Chicago coat, the off white Chicago ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a that's a six thousand dollar sneaker on a secondary market. Like it just it doesn't. You know, what I mean, it, for for the people who really genuinely love them. We also got a 2013 model, but that was garbage. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it, it, it's, uh you know, it kind of it does suck. But then, you know, so that's why I can't really truly not people who just are like, yo, just give me some hyper royals. Give me some turbos. Give me I like the pollen joints. Mm-hmm. I like the B pollen joints that are coming out. I don't like the Nike emblem placement, but I like the B pollens. I mean, it it is what it is, man. So, yeah, yeah and know. then like you know, just I know it it always just goes back to we can't get it, so then it's just like all right, let's just make it ourselves, and then we got the situation like we were talking earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Uh, more than I'm, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, you you're right. We've almost had what like half a century of of sneaker game kind of situation where. Yeah, let's say that it's almost a half a century of hype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the best way to sort of roundabout say it. Do you think do you think back in the day, like in the 1800s or whatever, when they're wearing buckles on their shoes, do you think anybody was like crazy about their buckle shoes? They were like, oh, you got the gold buckle shoes. You got. Oh, you know what? Yes, absolutely. Dog, (laughs) there's no way that this didn't exist back then. It had to. Right. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, it is it's um, it's uh. It's a class. It's it's uh you know, what do you think? Royalty was wearing paper bags on this shit. Mm-hmm. No, them that then shits was fly as fuck. I'm sure they look crazy to us now, but back then I'm sure that shit was fucking gold buckles versus the fucking, you know, like mm-hmm. a f- like a hoof. Silver buckles were mids. <laughs> ah, you like silver buckles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at you, this bitch ass got bronze on this shit. Look at bronze, you fucking rusty piece of shit. Bronze, why don't you just tell us you're poor? <laughs> <laughs> this guy got a potato sack sneaker. Get this fucking guy out of here. Yeah. So stupid. But that's what it is, bro. It's just, it's classism. Kind of, you know, not to, you know, be weird about it. It's the truth. And it's sad. It really is. I mean, as I, you know, as I get older, man, like I, I always say, man, like, 
Like it, it just feels like, you know, and, and you put the sneaker on and like, you know, back in the days, like when I was younger, I was like, oh man, you know, it, I'm about, I got a dope show. I'm about to fucking wild out, put some old D shit on. And I guess maybe because, you know, things are a little different. Like I don't feel that same love anymore. I mean, I ain't, I ain't out the game, mm-hmm. but it's just it, it, the classism shit just feels, you know, just, just a real fucking thing. That's true. You've been, you know, anytime I see somebody trying to gas you up on your sneakers, in like a club or something, you'd be like, nah, man, these are just, these are just shoes, you know? It's just shoes, man. Very humble man when it comes to that. Uh, you know, I mean, and that's, and I'll say that and I, and, and I, cause I see, I see so many comics and they, and you know, I, I've been in situations where I'm like, dude, come on, man. You ain't, like I've seen com- people, and I'll say this on this podcast, I've seen comics make some, some dude, you know, complimented a dude on his sneakers and he was like, and I guess he said the wrong model and the comic like tried to make him feel stupid because of the wrong model. And I'm like, bro, like, like just, you know, it's not that serious, man. It's it was like, me. I, I did that. I was trying to be, <laughs> I was like, well, like, it's idiot. It's not a Jordan two stupid. You know, yeah. it, there, there is one, there is a situation where if like you uh, people are, us if we do it we should get called out like when i got called out for misspeaking about um uh tinker peter hatfield moore? yeah peter moore which i should eat that that's me i'm supposed to i'm like we were just saying i'm supposed should, to help inform that. yeah i'm mm-hmm. like and i do it's just a situation where i misspoke and you guys should point the finger and go ha ha bitch you got that shit wrong and i'm like right, i gotta eat that you know what i mean but like a regular dude like regular dude just let him uh, take the compliment bro that's that's what i'm saying so you know i think that's that's what a lot of people need to understand in this shit man it's like come on man this is all material shit these shit's gonna break apart anyway and and you know and it's like all right you know what i mean it, we all should, we all should have bigger goals than just fucking being dripped out kings you know what i mean like yeah. it's bigger goals in life so i think that's uh then don't get it twisted because when, when I if I have to, I'll fucking I'll step out on all you Not right. Not you guys. But I'm just saying in general. No, but I'm like, with you on that. Yeah, uh, I'm behind you'll, you'll this step message, on us too, man. We know what you got. You got so, some fucking heat. So I'm just but I'm just saying like it ain't you know, we ain't out here trying to make people feel stupid. You know what I mean? And I and that's one thing I'll say with all the listeners. People message me and shit. And it's just like, yo, dude, like I ain't I ain't never going to try to make you feel like you ain't just because you ain't got this from mm-hmm. 20. 14 that you ain't shit like nah everyone starts somewhere you know what i mean so just keep doing buy what you like wear what you like and and treat everyone with respect hell mm-hmm. yeah lawrence where can they find your podcast uh you can find my podcast on all streaming platforms uh, i hate this job like i said listen to the luke episode it's fucking funny you know we talked we had a good uh heartfelt conversation about you know raises and and getting Power getting books and all that shit man. 25 yeah. cents bro anxiety we talked about anxiety anxiety too. yeah man so follow that i hate this job pod follow me on social media lzd325 luke where can they find you bro you can find me at trevisus on instagram and twitter mostly on instagram uh my youtube channel uh has a new new uh stand-up clip on it uh luke trevisi does a cocaine joke watch that uh what else do i have on april 29th i will be doing a um fundraiser for stop aap i hate uh it's going to be on twitch uh more la- more information will be coming out later in the week but just be uh, on the lookout for that we're going to be playing among us it's going to be fun bunch of filipinos and making money for good chris where can we find you uh at not that chini c-h-e-n-e-y on all socials um you know and also make sure the podcast follow us on the on instagram um at sub podcast nyc the discord um we're gonna get our tiktok game popping eventually um you know we got a bunch of good stuff coming in the pipeline um i will say i've been kind of slightly mentioning it but there's a timberland and a life thing that got pushed to may it was supposed to come out originally right now but may that's gonna drop and you might see your boy here in some of the campaign imagery i don't know which ones they're using or not but depending on which one they use i might be looking crazy out here May is roasting season. Remember that, boy. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Um, you know, and then, um, yep. Uh, Lawrence's podcast, uh, your Twitch thing. Yeah. And then oh, also sold out Tuesday is coming back unofficially. I'm in the talks of working out with what the first date's going to be. But like stand up's coming back, guys. So you'll be able to see your boys working uh, back in action. Me and uh, Luke got to get unrusted. Unrusted. Well, I'll bring the Supreme mic so you guys can see it in person. Ooh, ooh. I love it. Do it. Yes. So that's and, it, guys. Uh, thank, thank you for listening as always, y'all. So keep supporting. Give us the five stars. 
uh rate us review us leave mm-hmm. great comments join the discord discord is so fun and yeah. uh yeah that's it so next week peace all right guys peace